Animal Consciousness. This is a special presentation by Feed the Minds. We rely on planet Earth for our survival, shelter, air, water, and for food. Our Earth was once believed to be unlimited. But today we realize that our planet's resources are limited. Our world and people face many problems, including hunger, poverty, population explosion, global warming, air and water pollution, and habitat destruction. One third of the world's mammals face extinction within the next 30 years. Habitat destruction, increase in poaching, and the illegal animal trade threaten animals worldwide. <laughs> Habitat destruction, increase in poaching, and the illegal animal trade threaten animals worldwide. Ed Bagley Jr. is an actor and environmentalist. He is best known for his role in the television series St. Elsewhere, for which he received six consecutive Emmy Award nominations and his recent reality show, Living with Ed, with his wife, actress, Rochelle Carson Bagley. Ed is noted for turning up to Hollywood events on a bicycle. I think it's important that we behave in a sustainable manner so that there's some resources left for our children and grandchildren so they have a habitable planet as, uh, as the one I grew up on. Uh, and uh, if we don't, I think they'll judge us very harshly and uh, they would be correct to do so. Let's behave in an energy efficient manner and do things that are good for the environment to clean up the air in our cities like Houston, Bakersfield and LA, to lessen our dependence on foreign oil and to put money in our pockets. Do it for those three things. And in so doing, you've bought yourself a, an insurance policy for climate change in case those many scientists are right. So you don't have to do it for uh, reasons of climate change, do it for other reasons, and uh, you bought yourself some good insurance. You know, oil and coal companies, they're trying to underplay the problem so they can continue to do what they do. Just zero that out, if you will, and just uh, deal with people who have PhD after the name, people who study climate, and deal with, you know, organizations that are quite reputable, like NASA, NOAA, who's, whoever you trust. I certainly trust National Geographic and uh, people like that in NASA and NOAA. Even if you don't care about animals, and you know someone who doesn't care much about them, who say, and I've heard it said on many radio shows, I wouldn't give, you know, uh, every California owl a break to, you know, at the cost of one California job. People have said that. So even if you don't care about the owls and the many other species, I hope you care about your own well-being, because like an airplane that has many rivets in it that keep it, uh, you know, aeronautically intact, uh, I would hope you wouldn't want to lose too many rivets from that airplane because otherwise it will cease to fly. The many species that we're losing are all rivets in an airplane that keep it together, that keep us all aloft. There's a web of life that keeps us aloft and keeps us uh, viable. And if you lose too many of those rivets, uh, you know, uh, we might crash and we don't want that for our own well-being. You know, I, I've showed starting in 1970 and really showed my, with my current home in 1988 what you could do with a 1936 energy inefficient home. You know, I, I've showed starting in 1970 and really showed my, with my current home in 1988 what you could do with a 1936 energy inefficient home to make it as efficient as possible. That's what a lot of people are going to do. They're going to do what I did on the show Living With Ed and the kind of stuff I did in the house I'm in right now to, to make a current home as efficient as possible. Very common. Uh, question. But a lot of people said, what would you do if you could build a new home? So now I'm going to demonstrate that from the ground up, 
to build a lead platinum green home and, uh, and then be a net zero home. So I'm totally off the grid. Let me start with nuclear. I'm a big fan of nuclear power. We have a very safe nuclear reactor. It's sited in a very safe location, 93 million miles away. It's called the sun. That's the nuclear power I'm in favor of. It shines down on us every day with that wonderful nuclear uh, reaction going on, a safe 93 million miles in the distance. And uh, so that's my form of nuclear power. Solar and wind are much safer and uh, in the long run, much cheaper. Nuclear power is one of the most expensive ways to boil water we've ever come up with. If you look at all the costs, you know, insuring a power plant and uh, the disposal of the waste and the many other costs associated, not just building it and running it, there's a lot of cost with it. As we see in Japan, as we've seen recently, there's a great risk of catastrophic natural events occur. So uh, I would uh, be much more in favor of uh, wind and solar and geothermal and uh, nuclear is, is not for me. I wouldn't have any new offshore drilling. There's plenty of drilling going on in a terrestrial manner on Earth, you know, on, on the ground and not out in the water. And so I would begin with efficiency and reduce our need for all that drilling, for more new drilling. And uh, as we wrap up these wells, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I don't think we should drill any more new wells. That's for sure. Uh, and uh, I think there's other ways to get energy that are uh, a lot less damaging to the environment. Andy Lipkis and tree people are re rebuilding the uh, habitat, the urban habitat, uh, and making urban forests so more wildlife can thrive here. And it's important for our species, many other species, that we live simply so others can simply live. Recently, Ed was the keynote speaker at the California Science Education Conference. I was born in Hollywood. I've seen many, many Hollywood power struggles uh, acted out. My wife and I have a very different kind of power struggle. It's over kilowatt hours, <laughs> and blow dryers, and curling irons, and things like that. I know that wind power works. I know that solar power works. And I know that you can save money doing this. But it's not just money. I'm talking about saving money, and that's important to me. And I think engages a lot of people. But how can we begin to move to more renewables? And the way to get there, for me, is through energy efficiency, to be very uh, careful with these precious resources and not waste a, a drop, which is something I learned from my dad. He just knew that's the way he was raised by his, his uh, father and mother who came over in a boat from Ireland, that you did not waste that stuff. And that's a lesson we have to relearn. Thank you so much. We live simply so others can simply live. If we join together, we can do something. We can make the world a better place for people animals and the environment get involved we can make a difference Animal Consciousness. This is a special presentation by Feed the Minds. Animal Consciousness. People helping animals, people helping the planet.